Okay, let's talk about the best way to solve this type of linear equation. And if we look at this uh, linear equation, and that means that the variable here, m, that we're trying to solve for is uh, to the first power. And this is a huge uh, skill that you need to master in any sort of algebra course. But what makes this particular problem a little annoying to some of you, a matter of fact, you might have this expression on your face, is that we have all these fractions. So what do we do with all these fractions? Well, you need to know how to work with fractions to be successful in, alg uh, in algebra. So you can just simply just do the arithmetic to handle this problem. Of course, you need to already know how to uh, solve basic linear equations. So that's one thing you can do, or you can do another thing, which I'm gonna, of course, tell you about in this video, which I think is the best way or best approach to solve these type of linear equations, things with a lot of fractions. So if you think you know what I'm talking about, put that into the comment section. Matter of fact, if you know the answer, if you could solve this, uh, put your solution, because I'm gonna show you the solution to this equation here in just one second. And of course, I'm gonna go through the steps and show you what I think is the best approach to solve this problem. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics, and I'm especially speaking to those of you out there that think you're bad at math, that you can never learn math. Yes, you can learn math, but it takes effort, okay? But most importantly, it takes great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, even college level, and you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will make a huge impact, uh, positive impact on your ability to uh, understand mathematics. Also, most of you out there probably are gonna take a test with a dedicated math section. You may not even realize it. Any sort of entrance exam, placement exam, certification exam, things like the SAT, ACT, Alex, AccuPlacer, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I have a ton of test prep courses that you can um, check out to help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have award-winning homeschool uh, courses for middle and high school mathematics that might interest you. Hopefully you have your own great math notes. If you do not, you need to start working on this. Uh, Note-taking is so important in mathematics. But if you want to use my notes, I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into this problem. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you the solution to the problem. So there you go. M is equal to negative 69 over 10. Now, the worst way, I can make a video and say the worst way to solve this problem is to say, okay, just get your calculator out and convert all these things into decimals, okay? Just assume you will not have your calculator on these exams. You don't want to turn these things into decimals. That creates all kinds of issues. But uh, if you did that, well, you know, you know, good, that was good logic, but that's not what we want to do. You want to be able to work with fractions. But this is the solution. And if you got this right, well, I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus 100%. And we'll uh, throw in a few stars to make you feel extra special. Nice job. Now, if you got this right, but it took, a, you know, a lot of work and effort and struggle, well, uh, maybe you took a different approach. Maybe you just worked with these fractions. But here is the best uh, approach uh, to doing this problem, and that is let's just eliminate the fractions, okay? So, I mean, I like fractions. Uh, we definitely need to know how to work with fractions, but when you're facing an equation, something like this with a bunch of fractions, we can just get rid of the fractions. Let's just get uh, focus on that, and then we can move on with our life in terms of um, finding the solution to this equation. So how do we get rid of the fractions? Well, you can see here, I have the step, the best approach, and that is to multiply everything by the lowest common denominator. So we have to look at these denominators, three, five, two, and four, and we have to figure out what the lowest common denominator is. Now, hopefully, all of you out there can do this because this is kind of basic arithmetic, but I bet you a lot of you probably would be a little confused about, well, what is the LCD? You know, when we're talking about little easy numbers, if it's just three and five, most of it could be like, oh, the LCD is uh, 15, or five and two, oh, the LCD is, um, uh, 10 or 2 and 4. Oh, the LCD is 4. But what about all of these numbers? Well, are you going to get that right? And I'm going to go ahead and review that with you right now. Okay, so just uh, as a refresher, 
the lowest common denominator is basically uh, a product of all the prime factors of the denominator. So let me just kind of uh, take a look at this here again. So our denominators are these bottom numbers. So we have 3, 5, 2, and 4. So we want to look at the prime factors of each of these. So this is already a prime number. This is a prime number. This is a prime number. This is not a prime number. So uh, when we don't have a prime number, you want to factor those denominators such that they are a prime uh, number or prime factor. So 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. So we have 2 squared here. So this is 2 to the second power. That's the way we would write that. And then here, notice we have a 2, but this is 2 to the first. So let's list all of our prime factors in the denominator. So that's 3, 5, 2 to the first, and 2 squared. Okay, so when you are um, calculating the LCD or finding the LCD, what we need to do is have each one of those prime factors represented as part of this uh, multiple, this product. So we need a 3. Okay, so we'll have a 3 represented. We need a 5. That's another one. And then here we have a 2. This is 2 to the first, and here we have a 2 to the second. So what do we do? Do we just write 2, but we have 2 to two different powers? Well, the deal is you always pick the highest power of that prime factor. So this is 2 squared. Uh, this is 2 to the first, so this wins out, so we need a 2 squared represented. So 2 squared, of course, is 4. So now we have to figure out what 3 times 5 times 4 is. And, of course, when you do that lovely multiplication, it is 60. All right, now a lot of you might be saying, well, that's a lot of work. Well, listen, you need to understand how to find the LCD. Believe me, um, when you practice this, it's much, much easier than adding and subtracting all these fractions. It's You're going to, um, in terms of this equation, when you do this, it's just going to make your life much easier. It is the best approach to solving uh, problems like this. But let's go ahead and take that LCD. It's 60, and now we're going to multiply 60 by the entire equation. All right, so 60 times one-third, it's basically the distributive property. We're going to multiply 60 times each of the terms in the equation. Okay, so it's like the distributive property. So we'll just take it one at a time. All right, so 60 times one-third is what? Well, 3 goes into 60, 20. So that's going to be 20 times 1m or 20m. Okay, so if you're not quite sure, you can simply just go, all right, 60 times one third m and multiply those fractions out. But uh, let's go ahead and continue on. All right, so 5 goes into 60 what? Well, this is the way you want to do it. So 5 goes into 60, 12. Okay, so 5 goes into 60, 12. 12 times 2 is 24. So that's a negative 24. So now we'll move on to 2. 2 goes into 60 what? Well, that's 30. So that'll be 30 times this 1m or 1 half m times 60 is 30m. And then here we have 4, 4 goes into, let me just write this, or focusing, 4 goes into 60, what? Well, that would be 15, so 15 times 3 is 45, so that's that right there. Of course, if you're confused with this, you can just go 60 uh, over 1 times 3 over 4, and of course, hopefully, you know how to multiply fractions. If you are struggling with fractions uh, and need additional help, I have a ton of um, uh, YouTube videos on fractions. And I teach this thoroughly in two of my courses, pre-algebra. Uh, so I, that's what I rec would recommend for those of you that need additional help with fractions, because I also teach how to solve equations. But if you need help with like more basic mathematics, I also have a Math Foundation uh, mini course. Kind of goes over the basic stuff in elementary school you might want to check out. Okay, so here we go. We multiplied this fraction by the LCD. And we cleared all those fractions away. Much bet, a much better approach because now we have a new equivalent equation. I much rather deal with this. 20m minus 24 is equal to 30m plus 45. Okay, so when we solve this, it's the same thing as solving this equation with fractions. Uh, so the question is, can you solve this equation, this basic linear equation? Hopefully you can. Again, if you um, you know you are struggling. Well, you need to go back and review. So let's go ahead and take a look at the steps here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get all my numbers to the right-hand side of the equation. So I have 20m minus 24. I have this 24 over here. Remember, when you're solving linear equations, you want to get your variables to the left and all your numbers to the right. So if you have numbers over here, you want to move them over here. And if you have variable terms on the left-hand side, you want to move them over uh, to the right-hand side. But you just want to do one step at a time. So... 
this uh, negative 24, we want to move on to the other side, so we're going to add a 24 to both sides of the equation. Remember, what you do in algebra when you're solving equations, you can do whatever you want as long as you do it equally to both sides of the equation. So we're going to add down here like in a column manner. So 20m plus nothing is 20m. So negative 24 plus 24, I already know is going to be 0. I don't need to write a 0 there. Uh, 30m plus nothing is 30m. And then 45 plus uh, 24 is 69. Okay, so now let's go ahead and continue on. And here we'll go ahead and move this variable term to the left-hand side. So we'll subtract 30m from both both sides of the equation. And of course, we're going to add down on a column manner. So 20m uh, minus 30m, uh, or plus a negative 30m, is negative 10m. And then 30m minus 30m is 0. And 69 plus 0 is 69. And now finally, uh, to solve for m, we simply divide both sides of the equation by negative uh, negative 10, and we get 69 over negative 10, which is negative 69 over 10. Real quick, um, students uh, often confuse this. Uh, let's take a look at a number like this. Negative 4 over 3. Is that the same thing as 4 over a negative 3 or negative 4 thirds? Yes. These are all equivalent. So when you divide it by a negative number, just put that negative sign on the outside because a positive divided by negative is negative. So put the sign of the fraction, like kind of like in between the two numbers, okay? You, it's okay. I mean, your teacher's not going to mark you wrong, uh, but just so you know, there are students that uh, can, uh, are confused or saying, well, is this the same thing as this, as, uh, as you know, are all three of these fractions uh, equal? And they are, okay? So focus on the sign, but put the sign kind of out like so. All right, so there you go. This is the best approach to solve this. And if you knew that, well, that's excellent. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to have to kind of upgrade your little uh, smiley face, give you an additional plus. Matter of fact, uh, because everybody loves uh, grades more than 100%. When I went to school back in the 70s and 80s, yeah, you, know, you pretty much maxed out at 100%. But now, these days, you can get like 150%, 130%. Matter of fact, the GPAs when I went to school was like 4.0, was like the best GPA. But now you can get them like 8.2s and all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but listen, if it makes you feel better, if you know what you're doing, that's what counts. And hopefully you got value from this video. Again, uh, the best approach, of course, is going to be what's best for you. Okay, If you're like, nah, I don't like the way you solved it. I, I like the way I solved it. As long as you get this right, that's fine. Okay, uh, But you do want to know different approaches when it comes to solving equations. And hopefully this video helped you out. And, and again, if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.